to another episode of the Herf Locker. Uh, we're here today for another entry into the Scoop It or Scrap It series. And today, what we're going to be tasting is something that I don't know if a lot of people have heard of. Um, I received this as a gift a few years ago, and I was skeptical, and I'll, and I'll get into why. But uh, what we have today is the Burning Chair. Okay. Uh, this is by Dave Finney, a la Savage and Cook Distillery. Uh, it is made, and the reason for some of my trepidation is because it's made in California. Now, I have feelings about the state of California, none of which I'm going to express here. Um, but this is made on the historic Mare Island. And this and Dave Finney opened for business, I believe, in 2018. Uh, the Burning Chair, it has a mash bill of 75% corn, 21% rye, and 4% malted barley. Interesting mash bill. This, when, when I googled it to, to kind of get some of that background information, this has some really high reviews. So I don't really know how it's going to go. I can't imagine that the, the minimum age for this is four years and you know that's that's probably about what this is is four years old it is a and a younger bourbon made in california which maybe will introduce some extra character to it but i'm anticipating that i may not have that much fun with this one not sure not sure um let's see what the bottle says Nothing. <laughs> Finished and bottled by Savage and Cook, American Canyon, California. It's distilled in Indiana. So it's 88 proof, a little bit lower on that on that end of the spectrum. Um, let's dive right in. Let's see if we can get an interesting cork pop out of this guy. Hmm. Okay. The, uh, why did I just try to listen to it? Whatever. Hmm. The cork is made out of the same glass as the bottle I just discovered. That's pretty cool. This bottle retails for uh, anywhere between $49 and $61 based on what I saw online. As I said, I received it as a gift uh, several years ago. Um, I think it was for... I think it was for my bachelor a gift for my bachelor party i rented out a uh, cigar lounge um i rented out a fairly large size uh, cigar lounge for the night to have my bachelor party in and uh, i got a bunch of bottles as gifts so this is one of the gifts that i received and uh, another one coming up that i received as a gift there's probably a couple that i received as a gift that are going to be coming up as part of this so Let's see what we've got here. As always, not a drop goes to waste. Not on my watch. It smells really good. It doesn't smell like a four-year-old bourbon. Not that I could really tell you what a four-year-old bourbon smelled like. At some point, we all have to come to the conclusion that at least a little bit, little bit of fill is bullshit. So um, I, I try to keep things coming as I think of them. And sometimes I say stuff like that. And it's just like, hmm, I don't really have a way to justify that. Just smell. It just smells like uh, some, it smells like similar to the bouquet of some more older and advanced bourbons. That's all. It's got kind of a thinner color to it. It's, uh, it's not like a very thin. I don't know how to describe it. Sometimes you get like that really deep brown amber and it looks a little syrupy the way it sloshes around in the glass. This appears to be a little bit thinner, uh, which isn't a bad thing or a good thing. Just my general observations. The bouquet coming off of this is not very hot at all. Not really getting any heat off that. I am getting uh, a lot of sweetness. I There's a lot of vanilla and caramel and I don't know, like... Uh, Maybe brown sugar there. It smells very, very, very sweet. 
It's got a pleasant smell. Let's see how it tastes. So for being 88 proof, that's a hot pour. That's a hot pour. And typically when I do one of these, the bottle's brand new. And I've just opened it. That's not the case with this. I have opened this and tried it in the past, several years ago. I don't really remember what my thoughts were on it. Um, that is a very, very, very hot pour. I was not expecting that for, for an 88 proof. It's really hard to find any flavor in there with that heat profile, too. Again, there aren't that many reviews of it online. Uh, if you Google it, there's like 20 reviews, and it's got like a 4.6 star, but for 20 reviews, maybe 20 people got good bottles, and they felt really compelled to go share the fact that they found a good bottle of something new that maybe some people hadn't heard of before. Not sure. I'm going to go back in. I'm going to go back in one more time and see what I can find here. Bear with me. Toast, toasted almonds. Picking up some toasted almonds. A little bit of campfire smoke. Some vanilla and caramel sweetness. And then just, just heat, man. Just heat. Like, as we talk about the flavor, you transition in a coating. And it does a really good job of, of making you aware in every crevice of your mouth that it is there. Whether or not you're enjoying it is another thing, but it is definitely there. It definitely coats very, very, very well. Um, the taste profile is... Like I said, campfire smoke, toasted almonds, uh, some sweetness. Uh, I don't know, toasted, it's going to sound really stupid, but what it's making me think of is my, my, my mom's side of the family were 100% Italian. I'm half Irish and half Italian down the middle. It's, you know, fucking brown hair, red beard, <laughs> uh, green eyes. And, and I remember when I was a kid, I used to sit there with my grandmother and watch the Food Network in the mornings when I would be there on the weekend spending time with her. And she would make me, she would like get this good Italian bread from the local bakery and she'd cut it up into semi-thick slices and she'd toast it and butter it. And that's kind of like what it's making me think of. I don't know why, but I like that. I've never had a bourbon take me back to my grandmother watching the Food Network yet, but it's interesting the roads that we walk down and the trails that we find ourselves walking along in life. Um, that's cool. That's cool. As far as coating, I already said, it definitely gets up in your grill, man. I can feel it tingling between my teeth. It's burning my tongue. It's it's causing my, my jaws to, you know, tense up and you get that salivation from the from the back of your mouth coming forward. Uh, that's what this invokes for me. Um, I'm not a slouch either. I drink a lot of hot bourbons. This one's just, it's an immature bourbon, but it's unique too. It's not, it's not bad. And I'm not here to say bad or good. This is just whether or not I would recommend you try picking it up. Um, as we go into finish, it's really just about the heat. There's nothing complex to this finish whatsoever. Uh, I thought maybe they would do something interesting finished in California. Uh, maybe we'd get some, you know, good earthiness in there uh, to kind of, you know, mellow out any burn. And I wasn't expecting much burn off of an 88 proof, but I digress. And I don't know why, but I was thinking of maybe some like notes of grape or that like grape sweetness. And there's nothing there. And that's on me because when I think of California, I think of vineyards and crime. And I'm not expecting any criminals to come out of this bottle, so I guess I unfairly got the idea in my head that maybe they'd do something cool in the finishing process, even though they made no mention of that whatsoever in the, uh, in the label or their online press release statements. So that's more my bad than anything else. But I'm telling you through things as I think about them, and if you guys want to let me know that I'm a dumbass, you can do that in the comment section. I'll probably give you a thumbs up. 
Um, so the finish is just, the finish on this is one of the poorest that I've experienced, but maybe the more the air hits it, I don't know, I've opened it up a couple times, maybe now that the air is hitting it, it'll start to open up a little bit more and do a little bit better in that area, but as of for right now, I can only tell you what I'm experiencing right, right now at this moment, and, and the finish is not great. The overall depth of flavor is pretty interesting. Um, like I said, it, 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 it elicited some very strong memories for me. Um, which I think is really cool. It's fun when uh, one like uh, a drink can take you back, you know, the taste of something or the smell of something. When I smell black coffee, it makes me think of my grandmother as well because she's the first person that I ever met that drank coffee. My parents didn't drink coffee that I can remember. Um, and uh, I didn't go see that many people when I was little. It was pretty much my grandma and my parents. So uh, she's the first person that ever gave me coffee and she didn't have cream or anything like that in her house. And if you asked for something to cut the bitterness of the black coffee, she would make fun of you. She wasn't off the boat Italian woman. Uh, she didn't really mince words. She expected a man to be a man, <laughs> which is fine. Totally fine. I love my grandmother to death. Um, so whenever I smell black coffee, it, it takes me back to spending time with her, which is great. And this is one of the only other things besides black coffee that's ever taken me back to a memory of my grandmother. So, I think that's cool. I think that's really cool. Other than that, it's the typical things that you're going to get. I've never really got straight up toasted almonds out of anything else either, but I really like toasted almonds. However, there is a lot of hype online surrounding this bottle, and you're probably not going to find it for less than $50. It doesn't really deserve to be at that price point. I understand it's cool and Dave Finney and California and all that stuff. It should, it's got all the makings of a cool, interesting bottle that's different and special. It is different, but it's not special. Um, it's not, uh, it's not my favorite pour ever. <sighs> Out of all the bottles that are behind me, I wouldn't reach for this one first uh, to have a sip if I was just going to relax or chat, video chat with Ken and uh, talk about the channel or whatever. We usually do drink and smoke when we chat about, you know, our next ideas, which our next ideas they're typically Ken's ideas but um, I, I wouldn't reach for this uh, and I don't know that I would necessarily share it with anyone specific uh, anyone in specific I should say uh, this isn't something I'm gonna give just anyone because they're not gonna like it more 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 often than not this is something that I would give to someone that I know appreciates and enjoys bourbon and I would ask them hey have you ever tried this okay no I want you to try this and just give them a little sip of it and see what they say um, that's what I'm going to do with this bottle. I don't believe in drain pours. Uh, there's always something you could do with a bottle of bourbon. I just feel like bourbon is such a process. It deserves, my, and I'm not slamming anyone that does drain pours. That's fine. And I know that most of the time a drain pour is just a, f f uh, a figure of speech, but, uh, you know, a lot of years, at least four years and a lot of working hands go into the process of making bourbon. So I figure there's always something I can do with it without wasting it or being disrespectful. Um, that's just me, though. So, uh, as far as an overall selection, if it weren't for the price point, I would say scoop it and try it and tell me what you think because it is something different. It's something that Dave is trying to do differently. It's an interesting take on bourbon. I can kind of see what he was trying to get out of it here, but it didn't really come full lock, stock, and barrel forward for me. Um, so, I'm going to have to say scrap it. I would hardcore pass on this unless you really want to try something new and different and you're okay with the idea of maybe it not being your favorite thing. If you're okay with spending the $50 on an experiment, great. But for most people, the nine out of the 10 that are just looking to invest 50 to 60 bucks wisely, maybe stick a little closer to the old Forester 1920. Don't know. But uh, that'll do it for us today. I appreciate you stopping by. If uh, you didn't like something I said, make sure you hit that thumbs down and let me know in the comment. If you have a question or you like something that I said or you want to compare experiences and you've had this before, hit that thumbs up button and let me know in the comments. Other than that, if you like this series or any of the other things that you find on our channel, which I encourage you to go explore around, make sure to hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so that you don't miss our uploads. We do upload very frequently. Uh, we try to get some new content out at least once every two to three days. Uh, whether it be a cigar review or a weekly episode or a scoop it or scrap it or a cocktail. Uh, we have some other things coming down the pike as well. Um, some new ideas that we're going to be implementing. I'm waiting for some equipment to come in uh, and then we'll start doing those things. So thank you again.
God bless America. See you next time on the Herflocker.